Today I'll be doing the Easter eggs and predictions for Season 5, Episode 6 of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So be aware, spoilers if you're not caught up. And so, uh, this episode continues the trend of uh, referencing uh, Star Wars. And uh, we find out that Fitz's bounty hunter name is actually called Bosch Talk. And from uh, the movie Star Wars, one of this movie Star Wars, uh, Princess Leia goes by the name of Bosch under her uh, bounty hunter name. So, it's... It's a reference to that. But we also find out that uh, uh, Fritz is a marauder, and it's nothing from the comics or anything like that, but uh, I looked it up, and there is a group called the Marauders, and they're pretty much like a, a super-powered merc a mercenary group, so yeah. Uh, but a lot of this episode was uh, with Flint and Yo-Yo, and uh, they were talking, uh, Yo Yu's explaining about her uh, her terogenesis process and how it took over a week until her power manifested. Uh, so yeah, but uh, on uh, fit, uh, Flint's side, uh, he uh, we find out that he uh, didn't. He's sixteen years old and he goes through the terogenesis and he's he is based on a character from the comics called Flint, but he actually. His name is actually uh, Jason, I think his Jason, uh, but his uh, and human name is Flint uh, when he got his powers. Uh, but he basically is a geokinesis uh, person that can control uh, rocks and all that kind of stuff, form and make him like form it around his body so it looks it's like an armor type thing. Uh, but he can move planets and stuff like that from the comics in the comics. So yeah. Uh, was called. Uh, during a dinner party that Fitz was uh, with with all the bad people, uh, one of the one of the guests, uh, Herdarian, I want to say, uh, brought a J Zendarian snail from Zendar. So yeah, I'm assuming it's still up and running, like it wasn't destroyed or probably was destroyed, but it's being rebuilt maybe. But uh, I. I know it's not an Easter egg or anything, but w the way that uh, Cassius was acting in that in the scene when he f saw the snail, it was just so hilarious. I don't know why, but I, that's probably be my reaction to that giant snail because that that snail looked disgusting to me. But yeah, uh, and it w this was a sneaky way of uh, putting this line in the episode without actually giving. Uh, what was going to happen away. But before we... Uh, when uh, Tess leaves uh, our S.H.I.E.L.D. group to go get uh, the trawler ready for Flint, uh, she says, "Be right, uh, stay right here, be be back in a few. And which, in a, like, like Randy says in uh, Scream, you never say, I'll be right back in a horror film because you will never be back. So that's what basically what happened here is that she said that, li those lines... And the one, the only one scene that we saw after that was with a Kree, and then her death. So yeah, uh, but uh, during uh, the scene with Flint and Yo Yo, uh, she's talking about how uh, fast her heart beating, her heartbeat was going, and uh, it was called Mac uh, names drops Escobar, and he's just a Colombian drug dealer and stuff like that so yeah it's fitting because she is a colombian from colombia so yeah uh and i don't know exactly the contents like why uh he said it exactly but colson names drops uh cronenberg and he is a director i he they're probably hinting at maybe a future uh like storyline based on one of his movies i could could be wrong but yeah, and the only other reference I saw, or her, or like Easter egg reference, was that uh, Flint was going through his bag, and he uh, picks up a DVD called uh, Rizzo Rizzoli and Isles, I believe that's how to pronounce it, but it's a TV show. It's uh, I want to say it's about lawyers, but I could be wrong. Uh, but 
Comment down below if you know what that TV show is. But, yeah. And I know this is a stretch, but there's uh, this one character, Car Carabai, Carab Carabai, I want to say. Uh, she was like this giant lady uh, that was one of the people that were invited to the uh, table or the dinner. Uh, but she reminded me of uh, the Grandmaster and the Collector for some reason. Like just the way her, like, like the line on her chin looked and like just like, I don't know why. It just, her look reminded me of those two characters. Um. Posi I'm positive they're not related to any, or she's not related to uh, them in, in, in any way, but yeah. And I do like how uh, uh, these relationships in the show are in the, like, the f uh, background, but never really the forefront, but uh, I just like how uh, true to Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. it is. Uh, from the season season one, where Sky says that Fitzsimmons is psychi psychically linked, where Fitz is having like this proposal talking about uh, how they survived the bottom of the Atlantic from the uh, finale of season one, uh, going to Maveth in space uh, in season three. Uh, but then at the end of this episode, even though F Simmons had no idea that Fitz proposed to her, she he pr she proposed to him. So I like that that they are that close that they even uh, how uh, it's brought back from uh, last season where uh, the LMD takeover where Fitz was saying that I was thinking of proposing to you and all that. Uh, so they had that all both in their mindset that they would want to propose to uh, uh, that Fitz would want to propose. So yeah, but also I like how. Uh, these, like, both all relationships in this show are not uh, one above the other. Like, they're on equal ground. Like, Fitzsimmons are not a damsel's... Like, Simmons is not a damsel in distress all the time, and Fitz isn't a damsel in distress all the time. So it's... I like how they're equal, not one is above the other in, like, other shows that I know of. But, yeah. And, uh... The... Uh, another uh, during a conversation with uh, Daisy, uh, she uh, talks about how she liked the Cardian look, Cardian's look back in season one more than what he looks like now. So yeah, uh, for predictions, uh, we already saw it manifesting, but uh, Sonara is is turning on Cassius because she started the fight before uh, Cassius, uh, Cassius, or whatever. Uh, started, uh, told her to actually start fighting. So she's going to turn on both. I can't see her working with either uh, Cassius or uh, Fulnac much longer. I assume she's going to turn on both of them and probably work with our S.H.I.E.L.D. team. I could be wrong, but yeah. Uh, and at the end of the episode, we see that uh, Enoch is going to an, the elevator and most likely going to the surface because they say that no human survives up there. So she, she's he's going to be the one that saves May, obviously, uh, most likely. Uh, and uh, what's called? I don't know if it was Ben's idea to say this or was it Fitz? Because we know that Ben was communicating to Fitz. But uh, he calls May a ancient has-been. And I don't think May is going to take that lightly. And he's she's going to punch him. I just don't think he's she's going to say uh, be okay with uh, someone be calling her an ancient has been. So yeah. And uh, uh, talking about the surface, uh, I know it's a far fetched uh, idea, uh, possibly, but uh, they named name dropped Zev again in this episode, and. Uh, the last time we saw him was that he was getting attacked or surrounded by uh, the roaches. So, may but maybe he's actually not, uh, he isn't dead. Maybe uh, the people that are, are on the surface right now actually rescued him. And the scream was just him getting injured. He's probably, he could probably be very, very injured, just not dead. Uh, and 
uh, I, w- I had a thought that maybe Deke is actually a comic book character uh, called uh, Marvel Boy. Uh, there's a, all different versions of Marvel Boy, but there's one where uh, he was uh, had uh, Roach DNA uh, put into him. Uh, and since we're not calling uh, the Viral Nexians Viral Nexians, uh, because it's a longer name, they're calling them the Roaches. So maybe the reason they're calling them the Roaches is because they're hinting at a future like storyline or whatever. But also, this Marvel boy was actually a alternate version, alternate universe version of a uh, Kree warrior and all that. So, and they already had established that maybe this was an alternate universe or parallel universe where Quake, Quake destroyed the world, but not in hers. So, maybe they're all hinting towards that. I highly doubt it, but it's possible. Uh, but. Uh, this I, I put on Instagram and Twitter, and not a lot of people liked like the idea. Uh, but <coughs> I had the thought that Sim- Fitz or Simmons is gonna die. One of them is, cause uh, recently the uh, Marvel's uh, YouTube page uploaded a video of their love story, uh, and I understood that it was because they got proposed, but I found it kind of odd because. Yes, he they are engaged now, but wouldn't you want to uh, upload a video to where uh, the love story ends? Ends because he still goes would still go on after marriage, but that's where their final step stop would probably be, and then they would have a child child or whatever. But they decided to upload it before the wedding and after the engagement. So yeah, but. Other than that, uh, Fitz is talking about uh, a good motivator is pain. So what if one of them dies and is motivated to try to uh, fix that and get them back or whatever like that. And then they find out that they can't. Uh, But yeah, (laughs) I just (laughs) found that conversation a bit odd too because he talks about uh, pain and all that, so it's, I'm just saying it's possible. Uh, but yeah, comment down below if I missed any Easter eggs or references, uh, and what kind of predictions you have for upcoming, se- uh, upcoming episodes. See ya.